Emotional branding, now this is thoughtful. Hello, I'm Kitty Boo in Shanghai. Connecting a brand to a consumer on an emotional level is one of the most powerful forms of advertising. It's also one of the hardest to produce, and China is no exception. This week on Thoughtful China, we'll find out how Coke used emotional branding to become the world's number one brand and examine strategies to form emotional connections with Chinese consumers. We'll also tell you about the Go Logo China Challenge, a contest that teaches young creatives how emotions create great brands. And our own PD Black will explain three emotional states you need to understand to understand China. But first with us is Stephen Drummond, the Shanghai-based director of content and creative excellence for Coca-Cola in Asia Pacific. Welcome, Stephen. Stephen, Coca-Cola is the number one brand in the world according to Interbrand's latest uh, listing, mm -hmm. and your company has obviously done an excellent job building um, emotional bonds between the brand and consumers mm -hmm. in the West. However, in Asia, it's a totally different game. Could you tell us what's different here? Sure. I mean, in, in the West, uh, it took 125 years to build the, the emotional levels of equity that, that the Coca-Cola has, has got now. Um, in Asia, depending upon the Asian market, and of course we're talking China specifically, uh, we, we've been here for, of course we were here pre-revolution and now uh, since the 80s. Um, yeah, the difference is the amount of time the brand has been here. Uh, obviously people didn't grow up with Coca-Cola in the same way that they did in many, many other Western markets, so, so that's the key difference. You have to start to introduce the, the product, not just a brand, but a product in a relevant way into people's lives. Uh, and that, that's a prerequisite uh, before you get into so-called emotional branding. Um, but for the most part across China, I mean, uh, Coca-Cola has very strong equity, but, but there's still a big job to introduce the brand into everyday life. Over the last Spring Festival, the Year of the Dragon, I saw the advertisement of Coca-Cola on TV. It was family get-together, you mm -hmm. know, it was very Chinese, it has fireworks, and then people were wearing Chinese traditional clothes, mm -hmm. and um, Coca-Cola was on the table. So how important are these Chinese festivals for, for the company? Uh, absolutely vital. I mean, I, I think they're vital for, for any marketers in, in China to be part of that. But uh, it, it's a unique opportunity, and, and Chinese people are, are very open to allowing international brands into those experiences. That, that, that's the first thing. Um, so Coca-Cola has a history of, of being part of it. I mean, the reality is it's a huge consumption and therefore sales time for, for any packaged goods, but particularly for, for beverages. So you have to be in there for, for good solid marketing reasons. Actually, I noticed Liu Xiang was in your ad actually over sure. the Spring Festival, and then he was actually the son of the family. Yeah. He had the old father sitting there and he was you know, he was, it was a very, very nice ad. My question is, um, how do you select Chinese promising ce celebrities and make them part of the advertisement and make them help you to build this bond between the, the brand and sure. the consumers? Well, I think uh, an important part of uh, this, this recent campaign you, you see is actually taking someone who's got not only aspirational value, but he, he's someone that uh, uh, most Chinese mothers would be happy if he was their, their son, whether it's gold medals or not. <laughs> Um, but also, it's important to humanise uh, the stars. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, immediate post Olympics, there was um, they had the the first Coke of the Year featuring featuring Liu Xiang, and uh, obviously with a disappointment, but having the first Coke of the Year, and that that was, you know, a huge emotional thing. It showed Liu Xiang not just as an aspirational character. Mm -hmm but also as, a as a real person. And, and this year, of course, being an Olympic year, um, it, it really was a, one of those no-brainers to bring Leosha back and, and once again talk about that, that first Coke of the year. But you know, he's got that stature in China that everyone in China uh, aspires to, looks up to, mm -hmm. and he's, he's a very human, warm personality at the same time. Let's share this ad with our viewers. 好久没回学校看看
，是你，小胖。哎，现在可不能。欢迎来了。欢聚新年，就要可口可乐。Social media in China is obviously de- developing very fast. How is that changing Coke's way of reaching out to the consumers or interacting with consumers? Sure, uh, uh, you know we're, we're into obviously the the next big uh, uh, evolution in marketing. If you like, we've gone from uh, rational to emotional and emotional storytelling. Now we're into uh, emotional storytelling that people uh, need to be involved with or can be involved with. Um, the fact is, uh, you have to be in there and guiding the story now because consumers will be talking about you anyway.、Um, so, you need to be part of the conversation. You need to contribute to the conversation. You can't always guide the conversation、um, because,、uh, obviously, with、uh, Web 2.0,、uh, it's a two-way street now,、um, and it's unstoppable. So, you have to embrace it.、Uh, so. Obviously, it's changed what Coke and、uh, other brands are doing now. And of course, in in China,、uh, there's an enormous、uh, mainstream involvement in the web. You have a far greater percentage of people who are so-called creators on the web per head of population or internet population、right. than you do compared to the the West. So, people are very very active in that.、Uh, so it's it's our job to be constantly creating content. That people can be involved with, and talk about, and feedback.、Um, and, you know, the reality is, I think everyone's still learning, and the, the Web 2.0 is still evolving. But、uh, we know that 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 core principle of constantly for providing content, constantly being part of the conversation, and where possible, leading the conversation. Thanks, Stephen. Now we'll hear from P.D. Black with a thought or two about three emotional states commonly experienced in China. Every culture has its own unique emotions. Smart brands are always looking for fresh ways to pluck these deep heartstrings. Here are some examples from China. First is the feeling of coming home. That's the essence of Chinese New Year, where no distance will keep folk from their houses, because Chinese know that the outside world is cold, harsh, and unreliable, whereas home is safe, warm, and steady. It's all about the light through the windows, the sprawl of the extended clan, and the welcoming smile of elderly parents. Advertisers have a field day here. After all, nobody wants to go home empty-handed. Coca-Cola is a favorite. Watching Olympic hurdler Liu Xiang reunite with his family brought tears to the whole nation. The second emotion is sympathetic speechlessness. It's the feeling a person gets when he or she is facing complex obligations and has nowhere to turn for support. He's got problems, but can't express them, leading to a combination of frustration, self-pity, and ultimately resolve. I'm particularly interested in the language aspect here. Chinese people aren't great talkers, especially when dealing up and down hierarchies. So great ads know how to speak without speaking. Third is the inspiration that comes from standing up to daunting external odds. I'm talking about fortitude. This emotion adds jet fuel to talent shows here. Whose contestants have overcome everything from poverty to physical handicaps. We see it in politics as well. Modern China's government was, after all, forged in the grueling long march. That's just the beginning of the story. So good luck, and remember, when tears go down, sales go up. Thanks, PT. Regular viewers of Thoughtful China know our panels usually come from a mix of companies. Today is a little different. With me now are two senior leaders in Ogilvy and Mather, China: Chief Knowledge Officer Kunal Singha and Chief Creative Officer Graham Fink, and Huan Tan, Executive Creative Director at the Brand Union, a WPP Global Brand Consultancy. They are behind the Go Logo China Challenge, a contest for Chinese creatives under the age of 25, and a forum for them to learn how to develop successful emotional branding. Welcome to the show. Kunal, why did this group choose this specific topic for the contest? And tell us a little more about this competition. Well,、uh, the challenge really came out from the idea of a book called Go Logo, which was written by a venerable brand expert called Mac Cato,、uh, who founded the agency Cato Wonderman. And Mac and I met about two years ago when we got talking about issues around branding and design in China. And we realized that at the root of the whole、uh, challenge was really 
the fact that there weren't enough design and branding talent that were available to the agencies and also to clients in China. So we realized that we had to create a forum where branding experts, marketing and design community, as well as academics who were involved in teaching things like creativity and branding, could come together and inspire a bunch of young people to create things that were really original, things that were rooted in the culture of China. And that's when we thought that why not create a competition, why not invite them to create interesting content, uh, inspire them through a website, and then ultimately award them uh, trainings and internships at agencies like Ogilvy and Brand Union. So basically the, you offer a platform for these young creatives to show what they're able to accomplish and uh, through this they might be even get a future job opportunity with the company. Oh absolutely. So the idea is both to inspire and educate these young people and actually show uh, um, a, a kind of showcase for their ideas which really doesn't exist within the community at this point in time. You can get more details on the contest website at www.gologochina.com. Entries are due by August 31st, 2012. And as a media partner for the Go Logo China Challenge, we'll be back in the fall to tell you about the winners. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the phrase, um, for brands, being human is the new black. So in this society, it seems like companies need to be more personable, more human, and more um, um, trustworthy to actually be successful. And we see this widely played out in ads from um, airline companies to oil companies to fast food. So why is creating an emotional bond so important, so crucial these days? Yeah, I've only been in China for six months now and um, my perception uh, coming into it fresh is there's a lot of uh, very rational, um, very factual advertising, very sort of heady kind of stuff. And what interests me is if you can do something much more from the heart, touches, touches people, you know. Um, there's a lot of great emotion out there, like love and, and humor. Humor is a, is a fantastic um, emotion that you can use in, in, in advertising. And I think then you get people on your side and people remember it so much more than just pure facts. Are you saying that a lot of the advertisement you see as the fresh pair of eyes, obviously, since you just arrived at China, that a lot of advertisers are actually not doing a good job bringing things from their heart? Is that what you mean by like heady things? That yeah, they do? I, I think that um, I don't know if it's if it's if it's a Chinese way to be a little bit more sort of closed and 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 less open, and um, and some of my dealings with some of the people in the agency is is that is true. But I think if if we can just allow ourselves to open up a bit more, it, it just reveals so much more. You know, advertising in in China is still relatively young compared to the rest of the world, and. Um, and I think that, um, that it's got a way to go to go into that emotional area. And I think the first people that can really do it, the first clients who are really, really brave enough to, to you know, push their brands and allow it to be much more emotional will have such fantastic cut through. Well, I think uh, the best way to look at you know, the power of emotions is to look at the leaders in China, the political leaders in China. And look at Premier Wen Jiabao. He uses emotion in such a powerful way. He That's the ultimate example, basically. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, you know, look, look at how uh, uh, President Hu Jintao uses emotions through poetry whenever he launches into any speech, whether it be uh, in China or the United Nations. And I think that's where the leaders are really tapping into the emotions of people because they know that emotions work. And emotions work harder than providing a sort of explanations and a rational uh, logic for, uh, for any kind of uh, convincing argument. And I think that is a simple thing that um, you know, even consumers are learning, even common people are learning. Because uh, look at uh, who won China's Got Talent in the last episode here. It was purely emotional outpouring of support for the this poor kid for, who for the pianist yeah. who, who played with his legs. It wasn't just about how effortlessly how talented you are. Or, that's right. Yeah. How talented or how effortlessly or perfectly you could play the piano, but the but the kid, uh, or or the, uh, the the nomadic kid who sang, you know, the eight year old who sang about his uh, his mother and. Our uh, you know, thinking really is if that is what's happening with the political leaders, if that's happening in popular culture, 
it's the same logic which should apply to the same principles which should apply to branding and marketing communications too. Juan, I know you interviewed a lot of young talents and uh, what is your impression of their strengths and weaknesses in terms of understanding what makes a good brand, how to make a good brand and how to build that connection between brands and the emotional benefits? Well, I think young people definitely, they, they know no brand intuitively, right? I mean for, for China. Uh, if you look at like we were just mentioning Weibo just now, uh, uh, people like Han Han, you know, they, they are creating a brand for themselves, right? So, so people are actually uh, aware of that. But to them, I think uh, what's important is a, a brand that uh, understands them, respond to their needs, and then um, allow them to, to be themselves, right? Uh, they don't buy into a brand because uh, that brand makes them cry, you know, but they buy into the brand because that brand, for example, understand their childhood, understand why they behave this way, so then they can resonate and connect to the brand. Right. So, so raw emotion alone is not enough, but more importantly is uh, what this says about your brand and uh, how to connect to them. I think one th great thing about this, this competition, this Go Logo China, is a fantastic way of unearthing um, <coughs> new talent around China. <coughs> and when I first came to China, I got a big map um, of China and put it on my wall and, and marked out where all our, the Ogilvy offices are and there's like 17 of them and I, and I oversee all of them on a crazy thing. But I'm desperate to fill them with fantastic up and coming talent. So this is a great way of encouraging kids all over China to enter this competition because we're going to be looking at the work. I'm going to be looking at, you're going to be, we're all going to be looking at this stuff. And if anyone is great out there, we're going to get them in. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a chance of a lifetime, you know. Graham, Juan, Kunal, thank you very much for being on Thoughtful China. Well, that wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Tudo and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. See you again.